Welcome to the Llanelli Talking Newspaper with the stories behind the headlines. It's Friday the 13th and this is your first edition for 2012. We bring you a colourful collection of what's been happening in your community, how the fight is being stepped up to save Llanelli Hospital Services and later on Robert Lloyd will be introducing Susie Hammond and telling us all about the Lynx Project. You're listening to the Planetly Talking Newspaper. And with this week's stories, I'm Pauline John. And I'm Kerry Goulston. The battle to beam down a Nando's eatery into Planetly is the first chapter in a stores wars looming over the town. Planetly Town Centre is fighting back to prevent what has been described as a cynical planning application, timing by out-of-town shopping centre at Park Trostra's owner's stadium to stop potential developers from being attracted elsewhere. The £25 billion Eastgate Town Centre development is planned to be fully open in Llanelli Town Centre by autumn 2012, incorporating a six-screen Odeon cinema, retail shops, offices and a travel lodge hotel. Stadium developments have applied for planning permission to adapt one part of their site at Park Trostre, which currently houses Pizza Hut, thus losing valuable and already underserved car parking space to entice Nando's there. Llanelli Chamber of Trade and Commerce say the loss of parking space to attract even more customers on a site where parking opportunity is often strangled is alone grounds for objection. On the dual Trostra Pemberton site, the stadium already boasts Frankie and Benny's, KFC, McDonald's, Pizza Hut, Starbucks, Beef Eater, and in store restaurants at BHS, Tesco's, Marks and Spencer's, Asda Living, Morrison's, and Donnell Mill. Llanelli Chamber of Trade executive member David Craddock has described the move as cynical timing designed to steal opportunity from Eastgate and Henry Davidson developments. Mr Craddock said, Eastgate is being developed with a flourishing nighttime economy opportunity with great attractions in the multiplex Odeon and a Furness theatre to boost Llanelli with a clutch of restaurants and cafes as well as retail opportunity. Trostra and Pemberton, other than its drive-in opportunity, dies in the evenings with no attractions, so there is limited nighttime trade there. People and developments need to be aware of the tremendous future possibilities with Eastgate, which has its own transport hub. It is critical to the town's future well-being, said Mr Craddock. There have been some rare avian visitors to Pembrae's Kevin Sedan Sands this new year. Twitchers have been flocking to the sands of Pembrae Country Park following sightings of an Arctic skewer and snow buntings. It is likely the Arctic skewer uh, that has on the beach been on the beach since the new year is getting its bearings having been blown off course. The predated skewer will normally only land when breeding. It is more often seen flying low and fast above the waves in pursuit of another seabird, sometimes chasing it high into the air, twisting and turning to make it drop its food. The bird's normal climbs are Iceland and Scandinavia. It is more common in North and South America Africa and Asia, and is seen breeding in northern Scotland over the summer months. Three seed-eating snow buntings have been seen about the park and beach. The large buntings have striking snowy plumages with a sandy buff wash. They are a scarce breeding species in the United Kingdom making them a rare royal society for the protection of birds' amber-list species. Pembrey Country Park Chief Ranger Gavin Hall said that because of the vast tidal ranges of the beach, 
Kevin Sheedon can be seven miles long when the tide is in, but up to nine miles when the tide is out because of its convex nature. Kevin Sheedon, consequently, is a huge dining table for many thousands of birds. A man has been fined £175 and ordered to pay court costs of £264 after dropping a cigarette end in Llanelli Town Centre. David John Benson was convicted in absence of an offence contrary to Section 87 of the Environmental Protection Act 1990 at Ammonford Magistrates Court. The prosecution was brought by Carmarthenshire County Council. The court heard that the council's environmental enforcement officers who were on patrol in the town centre back in June when they saw a male talking on the phone and smoking a cigarette. He then dropped the cigarette end onto the ground. The officers approached the man and explained that he had committed an offence. Benson, aged 61, of Grove House, Tewkesbury Road, Upton upon Severn, Worcestershire, was issued with a fixed penalty notice of £75. However, he failed to pay it within the specified time and was prosecuted through the courts as a result. Campaigners sent a clear message of their opposition against the proposed downgrading of Prince Philip Hospital at a protest in Llanelli. A demonstration took place at Copperworks Road, Llanelli, when First Minister Carwin Jones visited Drug and Alcohol Intervention Centre Choose Life. Councillors say it was the perfect opportunity for people of all political leanings to rally around and express their feelings and dissatisfaction. The prospect comes after an announcement that the A&E department at the hospital is set to be axed under health board plans to reorganise the delivery of services. How will the bosses have revealed some of their options for the future of its four hospitals, none of which include keeping the A&E in Llanelli? The options which will be put to the public early next year consider a major emergency department at either Glanguilly or Withybush, which is more than 50 miles from Llanelli, or at Glanguilly, Withybush and Bronglais. The town looks set instead to have an urgent care centre, which would be consultant-led during set hours, but bosses insist the service will not change dramatically. Pupils and staff in Llunhendi received an early Christmas present, a £6.6 million state-of-the-art new school. The official opening of Ascol Gamrai Brinsherville took place with a special festive-themed ceremony and the unveiling of a plaque by Carmarthenshire County Council Chair, Councillor Ivor Jackson. The Welsh Primary School, which has a capacity for 210 pupils and a nursery for 30 children, was built through the Council's Modernising Education Provision Programme. The high-tech, eco-friendly building opened its doors a few weeks ago after being completed ahead of schedule by contractors Kia Weston. Its most iconic feature is the split-level corridor, which brings light into the building and creates space for pupils to display their artwork. Work included a complete remodelling of the former school campus and the demolition of the old school, which was built in the 1950s. Thank you, Kerry, and thank you, Pauline. And now we take a break from the news desk for our regular announcements column with myself, Robert Lloyd. We commence this edition of our announcements column by extending a warm welcome to some new listeners, who are... Mrs. June Hutchins of Getty Deg Llanelli, Mr. William Hugh Charles Moss of Penabryn Avenue, Burryport, and Mrs. Iris Williams of Caswell Avenue, Caswell, Swansea. 
We take this opportunity of reminding our new listeners and regular listeners who receive the compact disc version to ensure that the black plastic wallet is returned to us not later than seven days after receipt. You can retain the disc itself or you can discard it or you can return it with the plastic envelope and we will dispose of it. Listeners still receiving the cassette tape version continue to return the tape and wallet. Our service is postage free, but please remember to reverse the plastic address label. Next, we turn to our regular feature of greetings to those listeners who will celebrate a birthday before our next edition goes out in two weeks' time. And they are Mrs Edna Jones of Llysa Godian Trimsaran, Glyndor Evans of Bryn Gair Llanelli, Peter Evans of New Road Ammonford, Mrs Elsie Conniff of Mysa Bryn Pembrey, Peter Skivington MBE of Rainbow Court Paston Ridings Peterborough and Hugh Williams of Brettenham Street Llanelli. January is clearly not a popular month in which to get married because none of our present listeners will be celebrating a wedding anniversary before our next edition goes out in two weeks' time. Listeners, Mrs Catherine Thomas of Penloin Gwyn Road Llanelli and Mr Michael Henry of Penegraig Road Llanelli have joined the ranks of those listeners switching from the tape format to CD and we trust that both listeners are enjoying the improved sound quality. Our thanks to you and listeners Mrs Iris Thomas of Einan Court Gusainan and Mr Leslie George of Martin Road Llanelli for the enclosures towards our funds for which we are most grateful. Listener Mrs Natalie Lewis of Mysore Hav Pootlnelli has been away for two weeks over the holiday period, visiting her son and daughter-in-law who live in Pembroke Dock. We hope you enjoyed your visit, Natalie, and our thanks to you for your New Year greetings to all the talking newspaper staff. Also, listener Mrs Lillian Evans of Lisa Morrow Llanelli has been away to spend Christmas with her wonderful sons who live in London but she is now safely back home once again. In our edition of the 16th of December, we reported information received from a charity named Contact the Elderly, which organises monthly Sunday afternoon teas for people aged 75 years and over who live alone. They have recently formed a new group in Llanelli and currently have a very small number of vacancies, Meetings take place on the second Sunday of each month, where members enjoy friendship, companionship and, of course, a great tea. Any listener interested in further information can telephone Marion Lowther on the following number. This is 0800-717-543. That's 0800717543. Or they can email the following email address, and that's info at contact dash the dash elderly dot org dot uk. We are repeating this information at the request of a small number of listeners who wish to make further inquiries. Listener Mrs Margaret Evans has moved from her former home in Monachlog Terrace, Ponteberim, to her new home at number 10, Colebrook Road, Ponteberim, where, we trust, Mrs Evans, you have settled down happily in your new surroundings. We have, of course, amended our records to ensure that you continue to receive your talking newspaper at your new address. Listener Anthony Bourne of Argoid Crescent Trimsaran has joined the list of those listeners receiving the CD version, and we trust, Mr. Bourne, that you are enjoying the improved sound quality. Once again, we report a donation received from the membership of Greenfield Baptist Church Lately in the most handsome sum of £175. The church has, over the years, been one of the most consistent supporters of our association, donating annually the proceeds of a retiring collection. And we are truly grateful for such practical support. Our secretary has conveyed our appreciation and thanks to the church membership. Our thanks go to listener Mrs Jean Bell of Close Lambie Hangel Davin Llanelli 
for her note expressing good wishes to all the staff here at the Talking Newspaper for keeping her and other listeners so well informed during the past year of 2011. Listener Mr Charles Bull of Hale Nazareth Pontiates also wrote to express thanks for her service, which was pleasing to hear. Listener Mrs Lillian Evans of Llys Amorur and Street Lely had a slight problem with her previous tape with side one being of low sound quality, while side two was actually normal. Our apologies to you, Mrs Evans, along with our thanks for keeping us informed. The faulty tape has been replaced. Those of our listeners who are still receiving the cassette tape version will have received a letter from our secretary, which was enclosed with this edition. The letter invites those of you who also have a CD player to consider switching from the cassette tape to the CD version. And perhaps you will help us by ticking the appropriate box at the bottom of the letter and return it to us along with your tape. As mentioned several occasions, uh, of course, we've been working hard here at the Talking Newspaper to uh, update things. And we've now gone to digital recording, which enables us to do the CD version. As a further step forward, we are currently developing a website and the website, the address for those who were able to access the Internet, the address is the following www.llenetlytalkingnewspaper.org.uk. So once again, the address for that is www.llenetlytalkingnewspaper, that's all one word, .org.uk. And the website will be developed in the future with uh, news items. It'll have bits about the history of the Clatley Talking newspaper, some photographs indeed of uh, some of our correspondents and some of our readers. And of course, it will in time also include the latest issue of the Talking newspaper so that you can listen to this recording over the World Wide Web. Well, listeners, that item brings us to the end of this edition of our announcements column, which has been prepared by our secretary, John Williams, who wishes to thank you, our listeners, for your various messages and requests, etc. So please do not hesitate to let us have news and feedback on what you think about our service. And don't be shy about letting us hear from you. And now it's back to the news desk with further news items from Phil Mann and Carol Lloyd. More than 300 residents turned out with placards to show Wales's First Minister how worried they are for the future of Llanelli's Hospital. Carwin Jones was in the town to attend the 15th anniversary of Drug Intervention Centre Choose Life. Protesters shouted as First Minister Carwin Jones arrived at the Choose Life Centre on Copperworks Road in Llanelli. But residents were there to protest against the proposed axing of the Accident and Emergency Unit at Prince Philip. Rallied by news this week that Ward 5, which has 20 beds, could close by the end of next month, supporters lined Copperworks Road. They were kept waiting for over an hour until Mr Jones arrived. While some of the protesters had plied Cymru placards, many had made their own banners in support of the hospital. Prince Philip Hospital has been dealt a massive blow with the announcement that 20 medical beds could soon be axed. Hospital staff were informed of a 14-day consultation into the possible closure of acute medical ward 5 as Howell Tha Health Board aims to treat more patients in their own homes and communities. The ward is under the speciality of general medicine and diabetes and is said to have a high occupancy with empty beds a rarity. Staff have reacted strongly to the news, saying the closure will have a huge impact on the whole town. One employee who asked not to be named suggested at this rate, by the end of the year, there won't be a hospital. She added that the 30 staff members on the ward have been told their jobs are safe, as they will be redeployed by Howell Thar. Tlenetli MP Neil Griffith and AM Keith Davis claimed the proposed ward closure will knock the public's confidence in the health board's ongoing engagement process. Changes to boundaries which could see parts of Swansea moved into the Neath and Llanelli constituencies have not been welcomed by politicians. Under proposals put forward by the Boundary Commission, the number of constituencies in Wales will reduce from 40 to 30. 
in Swansea, the three constituencies of Swansea East, Swansea West and Gower will become two. For example, Gosainen, Pontadillais, Llangavirlach, Pentliger and Penerhiol will become part of the Llanelli constituency. Labour, which has a strong hold in South West Wales with MPs in Swansea East, Swansea West, Gower, Neath, Aberavon, Llanelli and Ogmore, say the changes were aimed at reducing the party's influence. Nia Griffith, Llanelli MP, said it was clear that having fewer MPs in Parliament was not going to help anyone, but she thought, in fairness, the Boundary Commission had done a very professional job. A spotlight will shine on disability hate crime, harm, neglect and abuse at a special event in February. Commandantshire Adult Safeguarding Board will host the open space event to demonstrate what steps people can take to protect themselves or people they care for from falling prey to crime. It will be held at the Princess Gwentlian Centre Kidwelly on February the 7th and places are being offered on a first-come, first-served basis. Service users, carers, health and social care professionals and general members of the public can attend. The police have teamed up with the fire service to carry out free home safety checks for older people in Carmarthenshire this winter. The David Powys Police Bobby Van will visit homes where a qualified carpenter will look at security and fit locks alarms and door chains if needed, as well as offer advice to reduce the chances of becoming a victim of crime. Thanks to funding from the Electrical Safety Council, uh, he will be joined by staff from Mid and West Wales Fire and Rescue Service, who will supply and install a smoke alarm and give practical information on identifying fire hazards in the home. The aim of the project is to help people feel safer in their homes by reducing the opportunity for crime and the risk of fire. The leaders of the Commandantshire Council's administration have confirmed a number of matters regarding the Council's budget process to stop people worrying unnecessarily and to stop idle speculation. Leader of the Council, Councillor Merrill Gravel, stated that having reviewed carefully the list of savings put forward by officers, there were very clearly some areas that it would not be appropriate to cut. The first of these was the Council's two children's respite homes in Llwynhendy and Blaenau. Councillor Gravel also confirmed that the proposal to charge blue badge holders to park would also be removed, given the ongoing national review of the entire blue badge system. Councillor Pam Palmer, leader of the independent group, said that there had been lots of reaction to the proposal put forward by officers for consideration to close some of our museums. Councillor Palmer confirmed that the decision on the museums at Park Howard and Abergwilly was to be deferred to allow for discussions with the friends of associations in Carmarthen, Antlinetli and the town and community councils in those areas. With regard to the Mentra Yaith, Councillor Gravel confirmed that whilst the Council could not continue to provide the same level of funding, the proposed cut would be limited to 10% this year, which conforms with cuts made to other third sector organisations. Councillor Gravel made it clear that the Executive Board had asked officers to look again at the budget to see how they made the required savings of £8 million. Women at Glyn Abbey Golf Club have hosted a special Pink Day event, all in aid of charity. The event, held at the course in Trimsaran, was the second of its kind in aid of Tenevus Cancer cancer Charity. Mementos from the Ryder Cup were donated to the club, including jumpers and golfing equipment, which was then auctioned off to raise £336 for the course. To add to the day, they made it more of a challenge by insisting those taking part could use only three clubs and a putter, which made things more interesting. They were trying to make it an annual event, at the same time increasing the number of lady participants at the club, which would help them enter the Carmarthenshire and Pembrey League. Pembrey is gaining fame around the world thanks to a pottery range made in the town. Graham Newin, who runs Pembrey Pottery, sells oil burners to an outlet at Covent Garden in London, and from there they make their way across the globe. Graham, 70, said they were sold around the world and were big in Japan. 
he made 7,000 to 8,000 of them a year. The business was formed when Graham and his wife, Sally, moved to the area from Wiltshire six years ago. The whole of Carmarthenshire is getting behind one of the greatest athletes the county has ever produced, Llanelli's own Di Green. By the end of the year, he could be the greatest athlete in British history. A gold medal in the 400 metre hurdles at this summer's London Olympics will complete the set for the Valenvall and Koika School, raised a 25-year-old boy. He is reigning European, Commonwealth and world champion. Olympic gold will allow him to make the legitimate claim to being one of the greatest British athletes in history. Di trained as a young school soccer hopeful by running up and down sand dunes at Kevin Sheedon in Pembrey, before flipping burgers at McDonald's as a cash-strapped student in Cardiff. He overcame epilepsy and has developed his endurance skills in freezing weather, running up and down the unforgiving hills of Bath's Claverton Down. Plaid Cymru has accused Carmarthenshire County Council of using council staff to engage in blatant electioneering in a statement criticising the party. Plaid members have abstained on a budget proposal voting and were criticised by the independent Labour coalition for being bereft of alternative solutions. Pied had believed the statement was made by the executive board of the council. The council released information on what cuts were being abandoned while at the same time criticising Plaid. Plaid were calling for the chief executive to make those responsible to be held accountable. You're listening to the Planetly Talking Newspaper. Welcome back to the News Desk with myself, Kerry Goulston. And Pauline John. Llanelli, Camarin and Ammonford have been rated top of the shops in Britain, beating off towns and cities across the United Kingdom. The accolade was given after a team of mystery shoppers rated the three Carmarthenshire towns as having the best independent retailers in Britain. Trained market research professionals paid two visits to Llanelli, Carmarthen and Ammonford to judge how well retailers performed across the area, like customer service, product knowledge and window display. Just how to prevent lorries disrupting crematorium services at Penpriest Llanelli is proving challenging. Despite a sign explaining the road is unsuitable for heavy goods vehicles in Welsh and English and an internationally approved graphic suggesting a no-go route for lorries using sat-nav technology, as many as 12 heavy goods vehicles a week end up blocking the road there. Bosses there say funeral services are still being disrupted by lorry drivers blocking the street after taking the wrong turn while using out-of-date satellite navigation systems. Carmarthenshire Council have installed written bilingual and visual warning signs, but the problem continues at Llanelli's Penpriest Road, even though the nearby road layout changed when the crematorium was built. A government summit is to be held to discuss similar problems around the UK when local transport minister Norman Baker hosts talks in March to ensure that everything possible is done to get the right vehicles on the right roads. More than 2,000 14 to 16-year-old pupils will be attending a Carmarthenshire Council Organised Careers Skills Convention at Parker Scarlet's in February. The massive youth conference will empower those attending to gain advice and information from representatives of industry on different career areas as part of their key skills in improving own learning and performance. More than 400 walrus dippers in fancy dress and a few hundred less brave paddlers took the plunge in the traditional Kevin Shidan Boxing Day dip. The charity, children's charity Latch raised thousands of pounds, as did the RNLI and other charities, capitalising on more than 2,000 people who turned out to watch. 
There was one brave soul in the mankini, but he was kept warm with a bevy of bikini-clad beauties and entertained by sumo wrestlers, rock musicians, batman, a variety of smurfs and even a fake old couple on Zimmer frames. One notable absentee this year was Charlie Budd from Seaside Llanelli. The 86-year-old was not well enough to take the plunge this year and it is the first one in 25 years that he has missed. Debbie Price from Davin, a radiographer at Prince Philip Hospital, has tackled most of the dips with her husband John. They raised the biggest laugh of all, struggling into the waters on sticks and a zimmer frame. Llanelli Town Centre has been dealt a double blow with the loss of a clothes shop and the impending closure of a shoe store. After around a decade in Vaughan Street, the shutters were closed for the final time at D2 Jeans when the company went into administration. A Llanelli man has been sentenced to a month in jail for theft Andrew Brian Taylor, age 35, of Pentloin Rodin Road, stole a bottle of aftershave from the boot store in Stepney Street. He also admitted possession of two grams of cannabis resin and possessing 11 diazepam tablets. Gerald Neve, prosecuting, said Taylor was seen attempting to leave the store with the bottle. Police attended and the defendant was strip-searched. A bag containing the diazepam was recovered from between his buttocks, said Mr Neve. Llanelli students are getting set to represent the county in a crime prevention quiz. Youngsters from St John Lloyd's have made it to the Welsh final after beating off competition from three other Carmarthenshire schools in the David Powys Police round of the competition. A Llanelli man has been remanded in custody for stealing jewellery worth £20,000 from his grandmother in Swansea. Rhys Lloyd-Jones had been due to learn his fate at Swansea Crown Court, but Judge Paul Thomas QC, who said he needed more time to consider what sentence to impose, revoked bail and remanded Jones in custody. Jones, aged 22, of Porthagar, pleaded guilty before Christmas to stealing valuable jewellery belonging to his grandmother on three separate occasions. His guilty pleas involved the theft of rings, chains, a necklace and earrings worth £20,000. One of Britain's most wanted men, who has been on the run for eight months after escaping from Llanelli Magistrates Court, has handed himself in. Gavin Cabarini, wanted in connection with an alleged £12,000 burglary at the Cumbria home of an 84-year-old widow, walked into a police station in Ireland. The Cumbria police spokesman said it appeared Cabarini left the United Kingdom following his appearance on Crime Watch. Carmarthenshire sports development team plan to run over 100 miles carrying a Carmarthenshire torch in a bid to inspire the, the county's young people as a prelude to the official London 2012 torch relay. The event in the next two months will start at Emlyn School and finish at Ascol Pantacalian and will spend at least a day in each of Carmarthenshire's 16 secondary and special schools. The project has been inspired by the forthcoming visit of the official Olympic torch, which comes to Carmarthenshire on Sunday the 27th of May, on its way from Swansea to Aberystwyth, passing through Llanelli, Kidwelly and Carmarthen. Llanelli schools visited will include Glanamore, Strady, Ascol Hirogofa, Coidca, St John Lloyd and Bryngwyn. Llanelli Town Hall has been blacked out by County Scrooges all over Christmas. Meanwhile, the former County Jail and now Carmarthenshire County Council headquarters has been ablaze with light. The contrast has drawn sharp criticism 
from traders and Llanelli's Chamber of Trade and Commerce, with this luminary pecuniary advantage given to Carmarthen over the Christmas battle for trade. Carers who look after people with dementia are being asked to share their experiences in order to shape the future development of services. Carmarthenshire County Council is holding a Dementia's Carers Consultation event and want to speak to people who care for relatives that suffer with dementia. The event is part of an ongoing dementia project being undertaken by the Carmarthenshire Joint Scrutiny Forum. The police and council have teamed up to tackle the problem of fly-tipping in an area of Llanelli. Environmental scanning has identified the lane off Martin Road in Penavan as a fly-tipping hotspot. This area has been a problem for some time and the Council Environmental Enforcement Officers are working with the Begin Neighbourhood Policying Team uh, and residentials and residents to try and prevent it. Well, thank you there to the News Desk team. And now it's time for one of our regular series of interviews. And I'm delighted to be joined in the Letty Talking newspaper studio by Susie Hamill, who is the coordinator for the Lynx Project, That's I think right. I believe it's called in Letty. Right. Welcome, Susie. Thank you very much indeed. Lovely to be here. Good. And I understand this building actually holds a bit of personal significance well, for you. Well, it does. It? Yes, because I used to live in the house next door. So, uh, yes, yeah, so I did have a little nose over the garden wall as I, as I came in to record to see how my garden was looking. So it's a bit of a trip down memory lane Absolutely. today. Absolutely. And actually the Lynx office is just on the bottom of the road at the bottom of Queen Victoria Road so although I came in the car Robert I could have walked. You could have walked really the um, but anyway it's a bit of a rainy day but it's Absolutely. just as well. The So tell us Susie what what is Lynx? What is it as a project? Well Lynx is a unique to Llanelli project, a unique charity it's only here in Llanelli and it was founded in 1993 by a group of people who realised that there was a room really, uh, a gap in the market if you like, that there was no provision for people who had recovered or were recovering from mental health problems. There was no provision for them to gain some skills build their self-confidence and self-esteem and move on in their lives. So that was the start of it back in 93 when we were situated in Trostre. Right. We're now as I say at the bottom of Queen Victoria Road so we offer a range of learning and creative opportunities for people. Some are, we do some accreditation, but we do lots of exhibitions, and we publish books, and we're writing a film this year. So lots of stuff. And lots of things going on. Lots of things. A big range of um, opportunities for for people to come along. And of course, the people who come to Links are people who largely live in their own houses, who may be anxious, stressed, depressed. Mm. Um, and as I say, we're just there really to to support them and help them move on. Okay. And the building you currently occupy is it the old YM's YWCA yeah, building? Yeah, I think it's the old youth training, something right. or the other. It's it's now owned by Robert Thomas, RT right. Electricals, and we are really grateful to him. He's a fantastic landlord because he built a bespoke right. um, project for us. You know, I went in the early days into a very greasy, oily, smelly hangar and said, I want all these things. And eight months later, hocus pocus, it's there. So we're really lucky. We've been very fortunate. Awesome. And, it's, and it's easy for people to access. People can come to us. We're on a bus route, by train. It's, it's, it's easy. close to the town centre and sure, so on. Sure, sure. The... I understand you had something of a grand opening, didn't you? We did indeed. Um, When we moved to the new project, I was so excited, the new building, I was so excited by it all that I asked an old school friend of mine, somebody who your listeners might have heard of, somebody by the name of Hugh Edwards, if he'd come along and open it for us, which which he did, and he was terrific. He stayed with us for two and a half, three hours, um, and we had lunch with him. That was provided by Angela in the Stradley Park Hotel. So it was lovely, and Hugh spent an enormous amount of time, spoke to everybody, spoke to everybody who was there and was very kind and generous uh, Mm. with his time and indeed with himself because now he's one of my patrons. Right. Him and Patrick Mansell-Lewis are our patrons which is great news um, for us, you know, yeah. So um, it's great that Hugh takes an interest in, I mean, I know for a fact that he's very interested in things in Llanelli and uh, he does take the opportunity whenever he's 
got a, a break from a shift at the BBC, so to speak, to uh, participate in things back home. Absolutely. And uh, But it's great that he's become your your patron. Yeah, he's great. And I only have to, you know, I'll get in touch. And I think he gets a bit sick of seeing emails from me. He knows it's a begging thing. Mm. But wherever he can, he always says yes. And that's very much his, you know, mm. his, his principle, really, which is terrific. And when he comes home, he's like, he's always been, you know, for somebody who's reached the giddy heights mm. of doing all the stuff he's done and broadcasting on the salient events he's done, you know, uh, Obama's inauguration, mm. the Royal Wedding, opening of the Olympics this year. He's still a good old boy from Clare. <laughs> terrific. It's great to know that, yes. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. The, so, but how many people use the service? I would say in a year we have between 60 to 70 people. They right. over, we're open five days. As I say, we offer a range of things. Very, um, It's all very scheduled because we try to get routine back into people's lives. It's, it's, it's more of a friendly college, I think, than anything else. So people come to do set things with a set projects. Mm. We always have an end project, an end thing, if you like, an artifact, you know. Um, so it's not drop in. Mm. So we're we're, op- we're open five days a week, and between sixty and seventy people in any year will will be referred to us. Mm. So if I was interested in photography or art, or are those the yeah. sort of things that you offer? Yeah, or? a range of things. I, if I can remember them all, I'll briefly mm. go through them. <laughs> um, we do art, fine art, drawing, painting, pottery. We've got a kiln and wheels there. We do tech textile work, digital photography, filmmaking we're doing, which is new this year, um, IT, which is accredited via the local college. Uh, we do something called Shop Cook Eat, which is a healthy living sort of concept where a group of people get together, give a small amount of money, decide what they're going to eat. They shop together, then they cook it together, they eat it together, mm. clean up together. So it's about helping people move up, move forward with those skills as well, mm. that particular course. So there's, we're also a member-led organisation, so we'll have uh, members' meetings, Right. once a month and if there's anything they want to do if I can make it happen yeah. I will yeah. do Oh, well, that's, that's great. And is everybody getting together as a team, basically? Isn't Absolutely. It? And people with mental health problems frequently do do feel undervalued, mm. um, you know, don't have any self-confidence. So to offer them something that they've asked for mm. is, you know, it's important, isn't yeah. it? Mm. Important in the recovery. Uh, how would, if I was uh, somebody wanting to access the service, how would I do that? Do I turn up and knock on the door or? Uh, no, we're or not. We, we, you have to refer. You have to be mm. referred. Now, you can self-refer if anybody right. wants to. They can self-refer. We're all on one level, incidentally. So if anybody wanted to come, we're fully uh, accessible which is really important I need to say mm. um, so you just you, you could ring up we'd, we'd get referral forms or somebody sent, or somebody would come to see you with the forms and then we just need a GP to fill in part of it and, and along you come and if somebody started doing one thing and it didn't suit them um, then it's okay we'll swap to something else we find something to suit everybody if we can mm, well, that's excellent and I understand well you're always looking for funds aren't you I mean how do you, how do you get funded well we, because we're mental health uh, an amount of our core funding comes from the mm. local health board and uh, very twitchily we haven't received our renewed contracts yet mm. we're waiting for that but we do go to funding bodies um, on a local level we've had funding from the Ray Gravel and Friends Charitable Trust which we're enormously grateful because mm. it allowed us to kit out our kitchen um, we go to any funding bodies we can really the, there's big ones out there too to trust Lloyd's TSB are funding our filmmaking project but we're always in a case you know Every charity is always looking looking mm. for money and, and for funds. Mm. Well, uh, good luck with looking thank for you. funds anyway. Yes, the, but uh, I think we, we want to talk today really about the latest project that you've got, which mm-hmm. is a, a booklet, that, a That's book right. which has come out. And yep. uh, what's it called? It's called Different Visions, Beautiful Minds. And it's a, a creative collection um, of writings, of paintings of photographs that have been produced at links by the members and we had funding for this from Llenetli Rural Council and really I am enormously grateful because it's hard getting a book published mm. as you will know <laughs> Indeed. very very hard so for this group of people to get something published it's really incredible and very valuable for them mm. uh, as an experience and it contains Prose, poetry. Prose, poetry, photographs, photographs of paintings, photographs of scenery around Llanelli, sayings, all manner of things, really. Right. And you're selling it for how much? We're selling it for £5, and all of that money goes directly back into services. Right. Is it available in places in town? Well, currently I haven't done that. I need to go and have a chat to a few people. (laughs) Maybe Mr Barry Lewis can help me out with that. Um, But I have to tell you that we had 200 of them published 
our publisher gave us a hundred free as a present, and we've already sold about one hundred and sixty. So that's that's not bad for that's something that bad. came out on the twenty fifth yeah. of November. Yeah. You know, um, but um, I mean, if you want me to give a phone number, yeah, that's fine. It's seven five seven nine five seven. And if if you'd like a copy of the book, give us a ring, and we'll sort out about getting one to you. Excellent. And do you have a website as well? We do. It's www.links.uk.net. Okay. I tell you what, Susie, if you could do us a favour, I okay. mean, to give our listeners a flavour of what's inside the book, perhaps uh, you'd like to read a short ac- extract, and I believe you've probably got a poem there that you've bookmarked. I have. This is a poem written by somebody called Grace. I'm going to read it, obviously, in my voice, but with my interpretation, Grace's might be something else. And it simply says, links. How special, so warm, so nice. What a safe haven, if needed, advice. A place to go if you feel blue, non-judgmental, sincere and true. What a great place if you feel happy or sad. The members all amazing, the staff all glad. Always someone to talk to, whatever your mood. No one gets angry if you're quiet or rude. Someone to talk to, interact with, feel right. Nothing malicious, no hurt, no spite. Thank you to Lynx, you've reached my heart. Save me in time before I truly fell apart. That's great, Susie, and uh, that gives our listeners a taste of what's inside the book. So uh, hopefully that uh, they'll be discussing that in, uh, in in future editions. And hopefully uh, so. Yeah, thank you very much, Susie Hamill, for coming in to That's see us. It. And uh, perhaps we'll see you again and talk a little bit further about links and what the work you do a little bit further on in the year. Thank you very much indeed, and a happy new year to everybody as well. Indeed, thank you. And you're back at the news desk with myself, Carol Lloyd. And Philip Mann. An Atlantic seal pup stranded at Llanelli was on the wrong beach and two weeks too early for the 25th annual Kevin Sheedan's Boxing Day Walrus Dip. The healthy seal pup was stranded on the nature reserve off Llyedi Haven on Llanelli Beach. Millennium Coastal Park Ranger Simon Jones said dock walkers had to be kept at bay for 12 hours until the tide turned. He said they consulted the RSPCA who suggested because the seal was healthy it was just probably resting and had been surprised and caught out by the tide which had receded too far into the estuary. Mr Jones said when the tide came back the seal pup took off, so he was clearly hungry. The pup seemed quite content, relaxing on the rocks, stretching, yawning and dozing, which is natural behaviour for seals. The young seal's appearance in such good condition was also very good news for the local environment and healthy nature of the estuary waters, said Conservation Ranger Mr Jones. Barryport Police have been asked to look into speeding by off-road motorbikes in Stepney Road. They are also targeting reports of car sales on the A484 road after a tip-off from town councillors. Officers have also been asked to do what they can about the indiscriminate parking of vehicles near Mountain Road, Pembrey, at its junction with the main road near St Iltis Church. A trim Saron man has been uh, prosecuted after being filmed throwing litter out of his car and into a river. Mark Bevan was caught on CCTV throwing a bag of rubbish out of his car window at Bethesda Road, Cumaur. Ammonford Magistrates Court was told that the Carmarthenshire County Council environmental officers set up CCTV cameras after receiving complaints from local residents of fly tipping along various sections of Bethesda Road, in particular of carrier bags containing empty beer bottles and cans. The CCTV camera was deployed at a specific location, trapping Bevan of Wynaclin Trimsaran, who pleaded guilty to depositing litter and was fined £200 and ordered to pay full costs of £485. A Llanelli woman has shed half a stone every month for two years. Vanessa Rhys Jones had weighed 20 stone 4 pounds and now comes in at under 12 stone. Vanessa said she'd been struggling with her weight for years and had been refused the chance of having surgical procedures to quick fix her weight issues. The slimline 42-year-old of Davin is a receptionist at Glanamore and Tisha Communities First. 
A new £2.5 million school is on its way to Barryport after Welsh Government agreed to back the project with cash. The proposal for one new school to replace the town's current infants and juniors aims to upgrade facilities for pupils and staff. The scheme, which would see the two schools merge on the present infant site at Elkington Park, was raised at the latest Pembrey and Burryport Town Council meeting. Education officers are continuing to work in collaboration with both schools to review the future provision of education in the area to take the plans forward. Hendy Square has been chosen for a memorial honouring Scarlet legend Terry Price. The Terry Price Memorial Committee is aimed to raise £30,000 to build the memorial to Price, who famously turned out against the All Blacks for Netley as a schoolboy. They have voted to place it on Hendy's Village Green, known locally as Hendy Square. The former Tlenetli Grammar School pupil made his international debut against England in 1965 and became the most expensive player ever when he signed for rugby league team Bradford Northern two years later for £8,000. The dual code star also played American football as a kicker for Buffalo Bills. Sadly, Price's life was cut short when he died aged just 47 after being hit by a car by helping a broken-down motorist near Oxford in 1993. Peter Pan has brought some swashbuckling fun to Kidwelly for the Mayor's annual charity pantomime. The annual event reenacted the familiar adventure featuring actors and actresses from Clenetley based Alan Phillips Entertainment, including Claire Lambie as Peter, Mac Draycott as Nana, Holly Robin as Wendy, James Fry as Captain Hook, and Kieran Curtis as Smee. With an estimated 150 people in attendance at the Princess uh, Gwentlian Centre, the event has been hailed a success. Those who want to get involved in developing the future of Kamalinch's new Centre for Economic Inclusion are being asked to make their views known. The £2 million centre, which will be based at Coase Hill, Llanelli, will provide a wide range of support services to help people of all backgrounds prepare for sustainable employment, including people who have been disadvantaged because of disability or social circumstance. Through the centre, people will have access to training facilities and small business support, as well as personal development support such as health improvement and rehabilitation. The aim is to improve the social and economic prospects of people who have been unable to find and retain employment or training for a long time due to long-standing ill health, disability or social barriers. And now for the epilogue brought to you by the Minister of Greenfield Baptist Church, the Reverend David Jones. On the 29th of December last year, the island of Samoa switched to the west of the international date line and joined the Asian time zone and in the process lost a whole day. This means that Samoans, from being the last place on earth to see the sun setting, will now be among the first to see its rise, and will lead the celebrations in welcoming each new year. This change, which flipped their calendar from Thursday to Saturday, has the potential, so they say, for a better and brighter future as far as trade and tourism are concerned. Well, time will tell. Not everyone was convinced of this, and there was some resistance to this major adjustment. But now there's no turning back as new maps, new charts and atlases record this historic change. It's the same in our relationship with God who invites us to prove a real change that will bring us closer to him and to each other through trusting and following in Jesus. When Jesus called his first disciples, they experienced new dynamics that eventually changed not only themselves, but the whole world. Loving God serving and caring for others, showing compassion and tolerance, and believing in the amazing grace of God that enables one to be changed. John Newton, who called himself the Great Blasphemer, was wonderfully converted, so much so that he was able to write of his experience in that much-loved hymn, Amazing Grace. And here John Newton said, I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see and all through the wonderful, life-changing love of God. I pray that that will be our experience, and may God richly bless you at this time. God bless, and thank you again for being part of this bulletin. Well, thank you, Carol and Phil, and that concludes our Friday the 13th new format edition. 
We hope you have found it both enjoyable and informative. But it, this re- edition was recorded for us by our digital wizards, David Herford and Brian Benbow. And your readers were Kerry Goulstone and Phil Mann and Pauline John and Carol Lloyd. The programme was edited by myself, Ron Kant, and the bulletin prepared by John Williams and read by Robert Lloyd. And thanks to Robert, too, for that very warming and interesting interview with Sue Hamill. We hope you enjoy the programme. Thanks for listening. And don't forget to check our website, flanethlytalkingnewspaper.org.uk. The Flanethly Talking Newspaper, helping you to stay in touch with the community. 